When in thinking about whether a lone pair is involved in resonance or not, we need to keep in mind that a p orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons, or one electron pair, right? And so when an atom is engaged in resonance, it can be engaged in resonance in, in really three ways, um, two of which involve an occupied p orbital and one of which involves an empty p orbital, but we can never engage more than one lone pair at an atom in resonance or in pi bonding more broadly. So the two ways we can do it with uh, electrons involved, with occupying electrons, is we can have a pair of electrons in a p orbital that is engaged in pi bonding. Say there was a carbocation over here, that would, um, that's one way to create a pi bond. Another way is two p orbitals on adjacent atoms sharing one electron each, right, to create a more sort of conventional pi bond. The implication of this is if you've already got a pi bond at some atom and it's got a lone pair as well, that lone pair is not engaged in resonance. That lone pair is not resonance active. Lone pairs on atoms that are already engaged in pi bonding are necessarily localized. They're kind of standard, sitting in hybrid orbitals, all that kind of thing. And the lone pair in pyridine, which is this molecule here, is a classic example of this. You may look at pyridine and first say to yourself, hey, wait, I've spotted an allylic lone pair. But this is not an allylic lone pair because that nitrogen is already engaged in pi bonding. And so electron flow like this is, is not valid. This lone pair is actually in an sp2 hybrid, and we're going to look at um, orbitals that show this in a little more detail here in a second. So the, the upshot of all this is this is not valid electron flow, and this is not a valid resonance structure. Pyridine, for example, does not have negative charge at these carbons. On the contrary, it's an electron deficient aromatic ring, something that you'll touch on in organic chemistry too. All right, now let's zoom in on this nitrogen to get a, a bit of a better idea of what's going on here. And one thing, before we even zoom in, think about what the hybridization of that nitrogen atom is. Pause the video and ask yourself, what's the hybridization of this nitrogen? And what would it have to be if this were to be valid electron flow? Those two things are going to clash. All right, let's take a look at the orbital situation. That nitrogen is involved in a pi bond, and here I'm showing that with the two blue p orbitals, and the orange highlighting shows kind of the, the pi type overlap between these two orbitals and the two electrons involved in the pi bond, which is in the Lewis structure right here. Because nitrogen's lone pair, uh, nitrogen's p orbital is already engaged in pi bonding, the lone pair of electrons is not in a p orbital, but in an sp2 hybrid at the nitrogen. Hybridization of this nitrogen is sp2. Nothing special there, really, right? In order for this electron flow to be valid, that nitrogen would have to be sp hybridized, Ooh, which is not going to be possible given that that's associated with the linear geometry, right? And we're inside a six-membered ring. That's not going to be possible in this structure. And so this lone pair, which is in this purple orbital here and shown in the Lewis structure here, is localized rather than delocalized. And the general rule here is because only one electron pair can occupy a p orbital on a given atom, lone pairs on atoms that are already engaged in pi bonding or already have one lone pair that is engaged in resonance cannot have another lone pair involved in resonance. And so lone pairs on atoms already engaged in pi bonding are necessarily localized. Let's practice with this now, identifying the localized and delocalized lone pairs. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just draw in where the lone pairs are located. And these are going to be on the nitrogens. So to, to satisfy neutral formal charge in the octet rule, nitrogen here is going to have one lone pair and one lone pair. And this nitrogen will have one lone pair. Notice we've got three bonds at each of these nitrogens, three bonds and a lone pair, classic neutral nitrogen bonding pattern. We'll have a lone pair there. All right, now let's talk about localized and delocalized lone pairs. I do want to start with the molecule in the middle because this is highly analogous to uh, the pyridine example we just saw. This nitrogen is already engaged in pi bonding, so its p orbital is already taken up with engaging in a pi bond with the carbon next door. This means that this lone pair cannot occupy a p orbital. It has to occupy an sp2 hybrid, and because it's in a hybrid orbital, this makes it localized 
on that nitrogen atom. This is a localized lone pair. This has consequences, by the way, on the reactivity of that lone pair. This is a much more basic lone pair than the delocalized pairs of electrons that we'll see in some of these other cases. Next, I want to move to the molecule on the left and focus in on this NH2 group. Let's ask ourselves, can I engage this lone pair in resonance? Well, one thing I might think to do is push electrons like this. Is this valid electron flow? Pause the video and make sure you can determine whether this is valid or invalid electron flow. Did you draw in the implied hydrogens? I hope you did. Because if you did, you'd recognize that this carbon is already saturated. That would create a Texas carbon, so that is not going to be valid electron flow. That pair of electrons on the nitrogen is localized, isolated, if you like, to this nitrogen atom, and it's sitting in an sp3 hybrid orbital. And so here again, we've got a localized uh, lone pair of electrons. Again, implications on reactivity. That's a pretty basic lone pair as uh, nitrogen lone pairs go. All right, now let's turn our attention to the other lone pair in this molecule, which is on this nitrogen. Now we can notice something. I've got nitrogen with three single bonds and a lone pair, so no pi bonding at this nitrogen in this resonance form in particular, but that is connected via a single bond to a carbon-carbon double bond. I have the allylic lone pair pattern built into this structure, so I can flow electrons like this to generate a significant alternative resonance contributor for this molecule. And let's go ahead and draw out the resulting structure upon that electron flow. I'm actually going to draw the pair of electrons we moved in purple because it was purple to start. And we end up with a new lone pair down here at this carbon and negative charge, positive charge at the nitrogen, which was the start of electron flow. And everything else in the molecule is exactly the same, including the other not basic nitrogen atom, which I'm just going to draw as an H2 here, and this is the resulting resonance structure. And this is a completely valid and quite important alternative resonance form for this molecule. So this shows that this pair of electrons is indeed delocalized. It is engaged in resonance, and that nitrogen is what I like to call a resonance active atom. Finally, let's look at the molecule on the right and the lone pair here. Here again, I have nitrogen with a lone pair and three single bonds, not engaged in pi bonding in this resonance form. And that is adjacent to or connected via one single bond to a carbon-carbon double bond. It's the allylic lone pair again. This keeps coming up again and again and again. And so I can push electrons like so to generate an important alternative resonance form of this structure. And let's again draw out what that's going to look like. We're going to have now a carbon-nitrogen double bond here, and I'm going to again draw that pair of electrons that we moved in purple. Everything else is going to be exactly the same, so we'll still have the NH there and the other carbon-carbon double bond, but now we have a lone pair of electrons here, negative charge there, and positive charge on the nitrogen atom. So this is completely valid sort of allylic lone pair type electron flow, and it shows that this pair of electrons is indeed delocalized. This is a delocalized pair of electrons that is engaged in resonance. And, and again, just to drive this point home one more time, why do we care about this? These lone pairs are very, very different. These pairs of electrons are very different in terms of their reactivity. This pair, and especially this pair, are not basic at all. It's very difficult for these molecules to give these pairs of electrons away. Much easier to give away this pair of electrons or this pair, which are localized and therefore um, not as stable, in fact, as the lone pairs engaging in resonance delocalization.